Mrs. Diolinda Rosa and her eight children live in Alto Zambezi, very near the Zambezi River in Angola. In the past, they have always been prey to malaria from the mosquitoes which live and multiply on the river. But in the last decade, she says, their life is improving a lot. She knows that their lives can change with interventions such as the use of insecticide treated nets, intermittent preventive therapy, and artemisinin based combination therapy. In the past, we suffered very much from malaria. The bed nets we have received help us a lot to fight against malaria protect me and my young children against malaria and improve our health. We are really very happy. In May 2007, the World Health Assembly resolved that World Malaria Day shall be commemorated annually on 25th April to promote awareness and education and understanding of malaria. This year's celebration marks the end of the UN decade to roll back malaria and affords an opportunity to renew our common vision and commitment as we continue to work towards attaining the Millennium Development Goals by 2015. Malaria, by its very complexity involving health as well as environmental and socio-economic determinants, and the way in which it affects various phases of our life can be related to virtually all the MDGs. The African region has an estimated 795 million population. Close to 90% of deaths worldwide due to malaria occur in Africa. The poor, children, pregnant women, people living with HIV AIDS, victims of unrest and disasters, and non-immune travelers are particularly vulnerable. The UN decade to roll back malaria was uh, declared to help countries make progress in terms of reduction of malaria burden. And uh, this is an important milestone. By the end of 2010, 11 countries, namely Algeria, Botswana, Cape Verde, Eritrea, Madagascar, Namibia, Rwanda, Sao Tome and Principe, South Africa, Swaziland, Zambia, and Zanzibar in United Republic of Tanzania had registered more than 50% reduction in malaria cases and deaths. The proportion of households owning at least one insecticide-treated net was 42%, and 35% of children under 5 years of age slept under an ITN. 27 countries reported implementation of indoor residual spraying with 73 million people, about 10% of the population at risk of malaria in the region, being protected by indoor residual spraying. Also, 33 countries had adopted a policy of parasitological testing of all suspected malaria cases, and 35% of malaria cases in the region were confirmed by a diagnostic test. The World Health Organization and other partners will continue to support countries in terms of planning to ensure progress in malaria control in the region. In fact, Elimination of malaria calls for the use of different approaches. Elimination of malaria in, includes uh, different uh, approaches. The technical interventions are important, but also the overall health system strengthening, but also the, the development aspect is very important in terms of urbanization, in terms of sanitation. Malaria control alliances are being strengthened throughout Africa. The Africa Leaders Malaria Alliance has committed to support elimination of preventable malaria deaths by 2015. The African Union and regional economic communities have also maintained malaria high 
on their health and development agenda. The success rate for malaria proposals for the Global Fund was 80% in round 10. Effective interventions including protection from the mosquito vector through the use of insecticide-treated nets and indoor residual spraying prompt treatment of malaria cases using artemisinin-based combination therapy, intermittent preventive therapy in pregnant women and infants are being adapted and scaled up. The affordable medicines facility for malaria was launched in Ghana, Kenya, Madagascar, Niger, Nigeria, Tanzania, including Zanzibar, and Uganda to ensure access to quality ACTs in private sector facilities. Malaria vaccine trials are ongoing in Burkina Faso, Ghana, Gabon, Malawi, Mozambique, Tanzania and Kenya. The approach will differ from country to country and in countries with high burden we would recommend accelerating control and sustaining control and in countries with low transmission strengthening their health system, their surveillance system so that they can have evidence on the best ways and times to move to pre-elimination. Cross-border initiatives are catalytic and help to accelerate and sustain control and, where possible, to prepare the transition to pre-elimination. Can malaria elimination be achieved without a vaccine? We have uh, some vaccines that have been tested in the region and we expect that in the coming years the results will be available. But this is a complex research because so far the vaccines that could interrupt the transmission of malaria are not ready uh, for use. The vision of expanding malaria-free zones in Africa requires decisive action by governments, NGOs, the private sector and civil society to tackle the policy, financing, management and other systemic bottlenecks to progress towards malaria control and eventual elimination. In 2009, African Ministers of Health at their 59th Regional Committee meeting in Kigali, Rwanda, adopted a resolution on acceleration of malaria control towards elimination in the African region. This vision and strategic framework is in line with UN, AU, and World Health Assembly resolutions. Specifically, member states in the African region have made a commitment to continue to scale up a combination of cost-effective interventions to reach every exposed community and individual. To consolidate the gains achieved so far, WHO, its member states and partners need to ensure rigorous governance to ensure performance and accountability, mobilization of additional resources, linking disease program development and health systems strengthening, better coordination of stakeholders and partners under national stewardship and effective involvement of every exposed individual and community. Among critical challenges that countries need to address are weak surveillance, monitoring and evaluation capacity, inadequate operational research platforms, lack of implementation of regulatory measures such as ban on oral artemisinin-based monotherapies, inadequate monitoring of parasite resistance to anti-malaria medications, and mosquito resistance to insecticides. WHO will continue to work with member states and partners to mainstream malaria control in health and development policies and plans, mobilize domestic and external funding, foster public-private partnership, 
support alignment of stakeholders around country priorities and provide guidance and assistance to ensure efficient use of resources for enhanced performance and impact. WHO will continue to support initiatives for the removal of taxes and tariffs on malaria commodities and a ban on the marketing of oral artemisinin monotherapies. I would like to say that uh, together with the African communities, the leaders, uh, the partners, WHO uh, is um, taking stock of the progress made during the decade to roll back malaria and especially um, on the occasion of Malaria Day this year. Uh, we would like to say that we have made a lot of progress but together we can achieve more. On the occasion of World Malaria Day 2011, the WHO Regional Director for Africa, Dr. Luis Gomez Sambo, calls upon governments, parliamentarians, non-governmental organizations, private sector, civil society groups, faith-based organizations, and all exposed communities to take stock of our common achievements and mobilize financial and human resources in a decisive push to further accelerate malaria prevention and control for the socio-economic progress of Africa. Diolinda, who we saw at the beginning in this program, is just an example to show that together we can fight malaria and improve our health.